What's good creators? Welcome back to Monzo Media. Today I wanted to go over some basic thumbnail design concepts. Because as you know, thumbnails is what gets people's attention when they're searching for video. And there are three concepts that I always want you to keep in mind. And that is TCS. The T stands for theory or technical, C stands for creative, and S stands for strategy. And what we're going to do is use Canva to design our thumbnail, but you can use any program that you use, Affinity Photo, Photoshop, Pixlr, whichever floats your boat. Floats your boat? <laughs> So here we are in Canva and what we're going to do is create a new design. I use the specs 1920 by 1080 and you can do the same. So in terms of theory, we're going to talk about composition and within photography, design, even in video, there's something called the rule of thirds. And basically what that is, is that if you imagine these imaginary lines here, you'll notice that they're evenly spaced in thirds. And the concept is really simple that you have intersecting lines here at this point, this point, this point, and this point. And of course, you know, you have the spaces at the top, middle, bottom, or on the left, middle, and right. Now these spaces can be used creatively in many different ways. So let me show you some quick examples. So I'm going to use this photo as an example. And I'm kind of being cheeky here because... <laughs> You know, there's this thing about the surprise face thumbnails. It's fine if you do that as long as it's relatable to the topic that you're doing. You know, some people do these surprise faces and it has nothing to do with the video. With that being said, as you notice, I've placed her face uh, right around these intersecting lines. What's great about this picture is that she's got her arm out and her hand out, which is a great place to put text. I could put my title there and that works really well. Obviously I would give it a nice background and that type of thing. The other thing you want to keep in mind too is that usually with faces you want the face to be fairly big so it'll really get that person's attention. Okay. Now whether you put the text on the left or right really is up to you. Now they do say people tend to read left to right. Sometimes it's good to put the text on the left. So if I wanted to maybe flip this, flip it horizontally and move the text over here. I'll just move her over here. Now this concept for the rule of thirds obviously applies to objects. Maybe you're doing reviews of some gear. You can also follow this concept, but a lot of times if you're using products, you might want to put it in the middle as opposed to the intersecting lines. And just remember these are guides for you to follow. Of course, rules can be broken and experimentation is, you know, how you learn and grow. Now, lastly, in terms of the text you use for your thumbnails, ideally it's best to use two to three words, big and bold, and I would use one or two different fonts like in this example. So now that we've talked a little bit on the theory and technical side, let's talk a little bit about the creative side of designing your thumbnail. So I'm going to use this photo. It's just a stock photo from Canva. And again, I'm going to follow my concepts that we just talked about and bring the subject close to these intersecting lines here. The first concept I want to share with you has a lot to do with creating depth. And simply you want to have elements in your foreground, background, and of course your main subject. So we already have our main subject here. I'm just going to pick a photo here to use as a background. So now we have our background element. And then of course, what we can do is add some text here as the foreground element. So I'm going to ungroup this. So here we have a really basic thumbnail. We have our background here that we added the foreground. We have our text and then the subject, call it the middle ground. 
where the subject is. So that's kind of the basic concept of this. Now the other thing you can do to really make the subject stand out more is create some depth of field. So Canva's got this really cool feature. If you go under edit image, it's called autofocus and this creates this blurry background. Yes, it's artificial, but it does a really good job. So as you notice, that background is even more blurry now. So it gives it a little bit more that sense of depth. You know, if I bring the blur intensity down, you see that especially here, there's not too much detail that you can really tell the difference. If I bring that intensity back up, you're going to see how everything blurs out here and it really gives it that nice depth of field. Now, the other thing you can do to create depth or that illusion of depth is to add elements either in the foreground or background of the subject. So I'm going to do something really simple here that I do quite often on my thumbnails, especially for text. So I'm going to add a shape here, bring this all the way across. So the goal here really is to highlight the text and give it a little bit of a background. So I'm going to fade this to about 40%. Maybe I'm going to change the color, something like blue. There we go. Right. But what I'm also going to do is put it behind the subject. So send backward. And now you see with this added element, it creates a bit more depth by, you know, putting something else in the background and therefore giving you the illusion that the subject, you know, is closer to you. And it also highlights the text as well. So this is really good if you want to use like a white font or a light color font and you want to enhance the text. Now, the other thing you can do is use different elements like brush strokes as opposed to a static rectangle type of design. You can bring this out, give it some color let's say orange and we'll do the same thing send it backwards and you could play around with the transparency or leave it full it's up to you there you go so we've talked about theory we've talked about creative now let's talk about strategy so I want to show you something really quickly here if I were to search for the m50 and 50 millimeter 1.8 lens you're going to see here that as I scroll Oh, whose video is that? That's my video. <laughs> but you see my thumbnail. So let's do this again. So this is camera gear. This is about a lens, right? Most of the thumbnails you see are the lens. This one's got, you know, someone's face in it. There's Freely, Freely, my boy. He actually commented on a video the other day of mine. I was so stoked. But basically you see most of the thumbnails we see here are the lens itself. Now, the reason mine stands out is number one, the color orange pops out quite a bit. And, you know, let's be honest, uh, there's a very attractive woman on the thumbnail. So that gets people's attention. But notice how I made it a very simple thumbnail, very simple text two words, Canon M50, and then I have my subject on the left. This is my most viewed video. And I kid you not, the CTR on this is usually 12 or 13%. And it's been like that for a year. You know, at its peak, it was in the high 20s. And I've always expected for the CTR to go down because that's typically what happens. But this one has been consistently at 12 to 13 percent. And again, this is just proof that you don't have to be this master designer to create these, you know, amazing thumbnails. It always helps, but strategy is more important than design skills. Now, the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because prior to you designing your thumbnail, you should have an idea of what your competition looks like. What I tend to do is type in that keyword in the YouTube search bar, and then I look at the top 20 thumbnails and think to myself, what can I do on my thumbnail to stand out? What can I do to get that click and to visually get people's attention? And then the other thing to think about is the wording you use on your thumbnail. If you're going to use text, what you want to avoid is using too many words. Again, I mentioned before, if you could only use one to three words, that is most ideal and you typically want them bold, you know, if you want to grab that attention. 
the worst thing you can do is have you know this whole sentence on your thumbnail because you got to keep in mind people are looking on mobile as well so they won't be able to read all that text also you don't want to repeat the same words that are in your title so if i had a title let's say canva thumbnail tutorial you know as my title I wouldn't want to put that in my thumbnail as well. Maybe I want to put something like get the click or CTR 20%. You know what I mean? So the ideal is to get that attention visually first in order to lure them to look at the title. So you got to think of the psychology of the mind. So I, at least for myself, when I see a good thumbnail, I typically think, Oh, what is this about? What does the title say? And I read the title, and if I like what the title says, then it gets the click. So you gotta think like the viewer. You know, I've wanted to do this video for some time, and I think I'm gonna do a series on it. Today's was a very basic concept, and I want to get into more intermediate, advanced concepts on design. You know, my banner says tutorial tech and creativity, and I really want to get more on the creative side with you. So this is a good start in terms of thumbnails, and let me know in the comments below uh, if you'd be interested in more on this series, and of course, if you have any questions. As always, I appreciate you guys. Get out there, hit record, create, and I'll see you when I see you.